Hey, fourth grade, today we are looking at module six and we're combining lessons 15 and 16. And we're gonna be taking a closer look at some decimal word problems day two. So put that into your table of contents and then let's get going. Today is all about the money. I can solve word problems with any operation including whole, that include whole numbers, fractions, and decimals. And when I say any, the two that we're going to focus on today is addition and subtraction. What we're going to be doing is looking at a lot of money word problems today. So before we dive in, let's review our Harry money family. We have our largest coin in the family. This is Daddy Quarter, and he has five hairs on his head. If each hair represents five cents, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, 25, that means that daddy quarter is worth 25 cents. We would represent that money like a decimal. We have zero dollars and 25 hundredths of a dollar. Next in the family, we have mommy dime who has two hairs on her head. Five, ten, ten cents. To represent that as a decimal, we would say that it is zero dollars and ten hundredths as a dollar. We also may realize that a dime is the same as one tenth of a dollar. We've had that conversation before. Next, we have our brother who's going through that rebellious phase. He's got one mohawk at the top of his head worth five cents. When I represent that as a decimal, I need to be really careful to put the five in the hundredths place. This is five cents, not 50 cents, so I put a zero in the tenths. And then finally, Baby Penny is so little, no hairs on its head, just a bow that represents one cent. Just like Brother Nickel, I have to be really careful of where I put my one in my hundredths. I need to make sure that I put a zero in the tenths place so it says one cent and not 10 cents. So using what we know about Harry Money, let's find the total of this amount. If we had five dimes and eight pennies, how much money would we have all together? First, I'm gonna put my five mommy dimes. For a total of five, 10, or excuse me, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 cents. And now I'm gonna draw my eight baby pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cents. So if I add together 50 plus eight, I have a total of 58 cents. I also know that's true because if I counted up the hairs and the bows, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, I get the same amount of money. So let's do that again. Three quarters, 13 pennies. One, two, three quarters. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five. We have in quarters seventy-five cents. Now let's count up how many pennies we have. Thirteen pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I know that 13 pennies would make 13 cents. So now I need to add 75 plus 13 cents. Zero plus zero equals zero. Now I'm gonna to go to what's behind the decimal point. 
I've got seven tenths and I've got one tenth to make eight tenths. I've got five hundredths and I have three hundredths for again, eight hundredths. So we have 88 cents. All right, here's our last one and we have a lot of money this time. I'm starting to become so efficient at counting up money, I can use what I know about these coins just to find the total. Like for example, three quarters was the same amount that I did in my last problem. So instead of redrawing three daddy quarters, I'm gonna write the total 75 cents. Seven dimes. I know that dimes are in groups of 10. So if I have seven groups of 10, that gives me 70 cents. I also know however many pennies I have is how many cents I have in that amount. 16 pennies is 16 cents. Now this one's a little bit harder to add up because I'm noticing if I have seven hundredths and seven hundredths and an extra hundredth, this is enough to make more than a dollar. I'm gonna make more than one whole group. And I wanna make sure that when I regroup things, I do it correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these three numbers on top of each other. And I'm gonna be really careful to use my place value skills. So I'm gonna start by putting 0 0.75 and a dollar symbol. And I'm gonna draw guiding lines through each of the place values so I can add them up. When I add together decimals, it's really important that I line up that decimal more than anything else. I want that to be lined up. So I'm gonna pre-draw my other decimals. Next is 70 cents. And now 16 cents. In my answer, I know that my dollar symbol will go here. I know that my decimal will go here. And now I can add it up like a normal addition sentence. Five plus zero plus six. Five plus six is 11. So I'm gonna regroup my one. Seven plus seven equals 14. 14 plus one more equals 15. 15 plus one more equals 16. So this is 16. Zero plus zero plus zero plus one equals one. So in total we have one dollar and 61 cents. Let's do that same thing over here. Let's find the values of these, of these money, including the dollars, and then let's add it up in addition sentence. We have a dollar, two dimes, and 13 pennies plus two dollars and three quarters. Well, first let's figure out what's in one dollar, two dimes, and 13 pennies. We have a dollar. We have two dimes for 20 cents. And we have 13 pennies, which is 13 cents. Okay. If I add up my hundredths from all of these, I have three plus zero plus zero. So this is gonna have three hundredths. Now let's do the same for tenths. I have one tenth here plus two tenths here plus zero tenths here. So again, I have two plus one, which equals three. And now I have just one dollar over here plus zero plus zero. So in total, this is a dollar and 33 cents. Let's find the same amount over here. Two dollars and three quarters, I know from earlier, is 75 cents. And now I can add up my totals. Oops, I made a mistake here. I forgot that I had two dollars. I'm gonna change this to two. 
3 plus 5 equals 8. 3 plus 7 equals 10. 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 4. We have a total of $4.08. Let's do it again. Oops. Put this one down here. And I'll solve this one over here. Okay, $2 and 6 dimes. I know dimes are just groups of tens, so six tens is 60 cents. $2 plus 60 cents is just $2 and 60 cents. All right, next let's look at $2 plus two quarters. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 cents. Plus 16 pennies would be 16 more cents. All right, let's start with how many hundredths we'd have. 0, 0, plus 6 equals 6. 0 plus 5 plus 1 equals 6. 2 plus 0 plus 0 equals 2. I've got some pretty similar numbers here to add up. 0 plus 6 equals 6. 6 plus 6 equals 12. $2 plus $2 plus one more dollar equals $5. So now we have a total of $5.26. So now that we have an idea of what all of these coins are worth, we're gonna dive into two word problems today. We have two word problems today that we're gonna read, draw, and write. Remember that when we read the problems, we are actually gonna be making some markings as well. If you wanna be a beast at word problems, you gotta start off as a cub. Cub standing for circle your numbers, underline your question, and box your important math words. So I'm gonna start by circling my numbers and their units. So when I circle one, I'm gonna circle one dollar bill because that's the unit, that's how much money we have. Two dimes and seven pennies. Miguel has one dollar, two dimes, and seven pennies. John has two dollar bills, three quarters, and nine pennies. How much money do the two boys have in all? Some important math action words that pop out to me is in all tells me I'm going to be doing some combining today. This is going to be an addition problem. Also, money means that my answer is going to have to be in the form of a decimal and dollar bill sign. So now it's time for me to draw. I have to figure out how much money Miguel is, how much money John has, and then figure out what they have all together. For Miguel, I'll put an M for Miguel. He has a $1 bill. two dimes, and seven pennies. So let's figure out how much money just Miguel has all together. Notice I lined up my values by their decimal. I'll even put my decimal in my answer and my dollar sign in my answer. So now I can just add up the values of each place value. 0 plus 0 plus 7 is 7. 0 plus 2 plus 0 more equals 2. And then $1. So in total, Miguel has $1.27. So now let's figure out how much John has. I'll put a J for John. John has $2.00. three quarters and 
and nine pennies. Zero plus five plus nine equals 14. Regroup my one. Seven plus one equals eight. Place my decimal point. And two plus nothing gives me two dollars and 84 cents. So in total, John has two dollars and 84 cents. Now that we know how much Miguel has, and now that we know how much John has, we can figure out how much they have all together. And we're gonna use addition to do that. So we'll set up one more problem. $2.84 plus $1.27. I'm gonna give myself lots of room to set up my decimal point and my place values. Four plus seven equals 11. Regroup my one. Eight plus two plus one equals, again, 11. And again, I'm gonna regroup my one. Two plus one plus one more extra dollar gives me four dollars. So I've read my problem. I've drawn my problem, meaning I've worked my problem, so now I'm gonna write my problem's answer. The two boys have a total of $4, make sure you use your dollar symbol, decimal point, 11 cents in all. For our last problem, it says, Sulian needs $7, 13 cents, to buy a book. In her wallet, she finds three dollar bills, four dimes, and 14 pennies. How much more money does Celia need to buy the book? Underline my question. And now I'm gonna look for those clue words that tell me what operation I'm doing. I know that if I'm buying something I'm losing money, and I also see the words how much more, which means I'm comparing two numbers, and that's a subtraction problem. So we have how much money Celia needs to buy the book, how much money she actually has, and we're comparing those two totals to figure out how much more money she'll need to purchase the book. So let's start by figuring out how much that book costs. I'm gonna put B for book, and I'm gonna start totaling up how much the book is worth. If the book is worth $7 bills and 13 more cents, then that means that the book is worth $7.13. Now let's figure how much money Sulian actually has. She finds in her wallet $3 bills, four dimes, and four pennies. I wanna make sure that when I label four pennies, the four goes in the hundredths place. There's a big difference between 40 cents and four cents. So let's see how much money she has altogether. Zero plus zero plus four is four. Zero plus four plus zero again is four. Three plus nothing down the line equals three. So she has a total of $3.44, which obviously is not enough to purchase the book. So she wants to know exactly how much more money she's gonna need to purchase this book. 
So we're going to set up a subtraction sentence to compare those two numbers. I'm going to give myself lots of room and spread out my place values because I might need to do some regrouping. Remember, if there's more on the top, no need to stop. If there's more on the floor, we go next door and get some more. So let's start with our ones place value, or our, excuse me, our hundredths place value. If there's more on the top, no need to stop, but there's more on the floor. So I have to go next door and get some more. This is gonna become a 13. 13 take away four, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Nine cents. All right, next place value is the tenths. Again, there's more on the floor, so I have to go next door and get some more. 10, take away four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six more. Bring down my decimal point. Six, take away three equals three and place my dollar symbol there. So how much more money does Sulian need to buy this book? Sulian still needs $3.69. Let's practice some more word problems together in your problem set today. Good luck.